welcome guys for this uh, next video session on uh, power electronics and instrumentation so just want to brush up here so in the last uh, video session what we discussed uh, we started uh, discussing on the thyristors okay thyristor is nothing but a combination of ferrotron plus transistor so important member of this uh, family of thyristors is scr that is silicon controlled rectifier and uh, we have seen structure in the last class uh, as it is made up of four different layers pn pn like that having three junctions top one anode gate connected nearer to the bottom cathode so it is indicated by this uh, symbol simple symbol without gate it is simply looks like a diode here rectifier diode okay so after that we are gone for studying the uh, static anode cathode characteristics okay why it is called static we have uh, discussed there we are not going to apply gate signal here as long as we are not going to apply gate signal and even though if we apply the gate signal and if you are applying dc it is fixed it, it is not varying but if you look at this rg here it is going to vary so if it is not going to vary then it is going to be called as static characteristics okay so if you are applying i is equal to zero or if uh, the fixed i is if you are applying in either case the characteristics whatever you are getting of the scr are known as static anode cathode characteristics okay in in this view we have started discussing uh, pq curve and op curve that is a reverse avalanche region and reverse blocking region so about this one i have discussed uh, clearly in the last class then second blocking region is a forward blocking forward leakage or forward blocking region and uh, last one is forward conduction region if you increase the forward bias voltage beyond uh, forward breakover voltage during which your middle junction will undergo avalanche effect and junction width will be reduced so by because of that large charge carriers will start crossing the junction that is a reverse bias junction j3 now its junction width is now reduced and resulting into immediately a large current here so whenever you get the large current you can see the potential drop or voltage drop which was very large during breakover or blocking region now suddenly reduced to around uh, uh, a very small value that is around 1 to 2 volts for the acr okay so you can see here up to 100 volts it can go during the blocking region so much large uh, potential difference uh, was there in the blocking region with the minimal current that is a leakage current because the width of the middle junction j3 which was reverse biased is very large okay so when once you uh, cross the for applying forward bias voltage beyond this will uh, causes avalanche effect at the reverse bias junction j3 and suddenly the junction width got reduced so that will make the dropping down of the voltage across scr from 100 to 1.2 volts and there is a sudden rise in the current here so one more thing what you have discussed is the impact of applying the gate signal so suppose if you keep your forward voltage nearby this pdo and if you apply ig1 so that ig1 is nothing but the gate current a small amount of gate current suppose assume that you have applied and remember that this gate terminal is connected to the p p region there pn pn p region okay so uh, as soon as you apply the uh, uh, start uh, giving the gate current to the gate terminal it will start resulting into the electron hole pairs here in the p region minority carrier pairs okay that will result into a uh, increase in number of that one will result into the avalanche effect again in the reverse bias junction j3 and suddenly your scr will switch on switch from a blocking to the conduction state well before the forward breakover voltage 
we further increase the IG1 to IG2, IG2 to IG3, we will go on reducing the time required to switch the SCR from forward blocking to forward conduction region. Means, uh, uh, if you go on increasing the magnitude of the gate current, we will go on reducing the time required to trigger on the SCR. And remember guys, if this you are uh, applying the gate segment only once then again it will be kept open it is something like you are triggering it only once with a small pulse of the gate signal so okay uh, this all uh, i have discussed already so what you mean by latching current and holding current so just a brief here for your understanding purpose so two transistor model also we have discussed in sufficient detail so as in case of transistor we have studied it, it as a model of uh, uh, two back-to-back -back connected diodes. So in the similar manner, we are connecting the SCR as a two back-to-back -back connected transistors. One is PNP type, another one is NPN type. We can see with the help of symbol of uh, emitter current, you can see here. In case of PNP, the emitter current is coming into the base. Whereas in NPN transistor, the current is going out of the base here. Now both the transistors are connected in a, a cascade type with their base and collector connected to each other in the closed loop. Okay. So about these two transistor analysis already we discussed. It's a mathematical analysis in detail. So it, with respect to this guy, I what I would like to suggest is you have to practice these uh, things. Very simple equations are there. Uh, <coughs> nothing is there. So, so we'll forget there. Uh, you just practice it. Uh, so, what I, I would like to discuss today is uh, so that is one. Uh, if you look at this one, the last equation, what you got for the anode current that is equal to uh, if you make ICO1 and ICO2 okay uh, minimum or negligible so what you are getting one minute so we will continue with this so simple equations are there and uh, I would like to suggest you to just uh, uh, one minute okay now it's fine so we will continue here so as you can see the last equation what I am discussing if the if you assume the leakage currents are negligible then uh, you can neglect them and final equation for anode current what you are getting the gain of second transistor multiplied by the gate current in the numerator Denomin uh, denominator will contain 1 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 okay suppose if you assume the sum of gains are uh, something like that equal to 1 then we will get uh, anode current uh, the denominator will become 1 minus 1 that is 0 and uh, anything divided by 0 will get it as anode current now will become very large means uh, these two are going to control the whether you are getting a small anode current or large anode current okay large anode current means your SCR is in the on state small anode current means your anode current now it is decreasing and when it will come down below the holding current it will be turned off means uh, your both IL and IH are now decided by the uh, the current gains of the two transistors okay so this is uh, these two are uh, uh, in this way how they are going to control the turning on and off of the SCR is known as a regenerative action regenerative action means once your SCR is turned on nothing uh, triggering is it required there you trigger it only once your SR will be on for a long time okay as long as anode current V is above the holding current when uh, as soon as it will become come down the holding current your SR will switch from uh, conduction to blocking state once again that is known as a regenerative action okay so hope you will get to uh, understand this one details are given in the notes you refer to that one if you will get any doubts you can quote them in the whatsapp group or else uh, i will discuss it once again in the next video so for today's uh, 
discussion uh, another characteristics what we want to study is separately we are going to study the gate characteristics here gate characteristics of s here as you can see here the gate uh, so far you are not connected okay in the previous uh, static uh, study of the static uh, s uh, anode cathode characteristics of s here okay we applied it there fixed dc so dc gate current we have applied there fixed one it is not going to vary so we can apply the gate current in different ways either you can apply dc fixed one battery or ac you can apply sinusoidal uh, waveform in that case during positive peak um, we will get the p is connected to positive it is got uh, so the junction width is reduced and start conducting during negative peak again width go on increasing and no negative peak is not going to help you to get the any conduction state of your ac here like that or else you can apply the high frequency of pulses you can just up go on applying the pulses here that will go on triggering the ac here once you trigger it it will be turned on for a longer time so like that so these are the different ways of giving the gate signal here either you can uh, apply dc gate signal or ac gate signal or ac gate triggering it is also known as or it is a pulse triggering by the gate signal so here we are getting the gate characteristics by plotting gate voltage versus gate current we are getting the gate characteristics by plotting gate voltage versus gate current you need to practice this uh, uh, graph uh, here guys so not much explanation is there but diagram is very important here so the whole graph is divided into different regions here like oa region what you are observing which is given by now some hatched portion here so this portion will indicate that you can see here so this uh, one is x axis is to indicate the gear, current is there okay so during this portion the gate current is very much less even this will indicate the gate voltage gate voltage voltage is also very much less means uh, this oa region it is indicating uh, the device or scr operating at the 125 degrees centigrade okay so where only normal forward bias voltage is sufficient to trigger on the scr okay no any extra uh, gate signal is uh, we are expecting to turn on the scr okay so that's why it is known as a oa that is a uh, it is going to operate at the normal forward biasing voltage with at uh, 125 degrees centigrade so next reason we are getting the minimum uh, limitation on the gate voltage or gate current that is uh, the curves are oil and uh, this ohe curves oil and ohe curves they will indicate minimum gate voltage and gate current limitation which is required to turn on the SCR. Beyond that, if you go, your SCR will start conducting. That is a minimum. So another reason what we are getting is this dotted square box what you are getting. So this will indicate the duty, uh, what you can say, the Q line here, which will contain the operating curve of your SCR. Okay. So that will contain so three main parts here. The top one here you can see the left top uh, corner this portion will indicate RZ minimum means your SCR is in the forward conduction mode large current is flowing in the device and uh, voltage across it is very small hence uh, resistance offered by the device is also very minimum RZ minimum that is the minimum here ok so if that so you can see here another dotted curve here another dotted curve this is the load line another dotted curve is there okay so load line you can see compared to this one we got uh, uh, um, uh, appearing to making an angle uh, less than this okay it is uh, going decreasing like this very uh, in a very short time compared to this one so this will be indicating rz max curve means resistance offered by the device or acr is very large so this will occur this is what it is indicating so gate voltage is go on uh, sorry the gate current is go on decreasing here compared to this one the gate current is go on decreasing you can see the gate current got reduced from this point to this point so this will indicate that your device is now switching from 
blocking sorry conduction to blocking state so here the current is very much reduced means uh, resistance offered by the scr is very large so this two curve we should explain uh, clearly here so which uh, may be not there in the notes you better note it down so there are many points are there just carefully come and uh, read the notes and come uh, see the video so that you can note down the missing uh, statements OM and ON so these two curves OM and ON now they are going to indicate uh, spreading region of your uh, gate gate 6 of SCR which are going to operate your gate uh, or uh, your SCR in the uh, forbidden region forbidden means uh, no sorry not forbidden in the uh, precautionary region where you have to take some uh, careful measures so that it, ca it cannot uh, increase the gate voltage or current cannot destroy your uh, device here so that will be taken care of with the help of om and on curve studies here so like that guys the explanation is given in the notes you can uh, try to write in your own words or elaborate the answer okay so so far we covered uh, static anode cathode cat 6 two transistor model of acr and gate cat 6 of acr so these are the three very important points we have covered so far okay now uh, let us see some of the numericals here so far whatever we covered here <coughs> an acr has vgiz cat 6 gate cat 6 so the gate voltage equation he has given in terms of the gate current okay the gate voltage equation he has given in terms of gate current that is vg equal to 1.5 plus 8 times ig in a certain application okay in a certain application the gate voltage has a rectangular pulses rectangular pulses means he is now using high frequency pulses of type uh, kind of a gate triggering so each rectangular pulse of uh, the width is going to be 12 volts and 50 microsecond with the duty cycle of 0.2 so what he has asked you to find to find the value of rg that is a gate resistance that uh, was varying no, in the previous uh, gate circuit you can see there series register in the gate circuit to limit the peak power dissipation in the gate to 5 watts 5 watts is the maximum limitation to limit that one register we want so that we have to find out here and also we need to find out the average dissipation in the gate so we start up with by applying the kvl to that small loop here so this uh, small loop uh, sorry uh, we'll have to go back here uh, oh yeah this one if you apply the kvl to this small loop no, we'll get this uh, equation okay. we'll be getting this equation vg is equal to rg ig plus vg so vg is given here you can substitute for vg this much okay so once again what you write uh, rg ig plus vg means 1.5 plus 8 times ig so another thing is uh, 12 volt rectangular pulses gate voltage what you are applying vgs that is gate voltage and gets get to source voltage get to cathode voltage that is equal to okay so if you simplify this uh, take ig as a common what you will get so rg plus 8 into bracket and multiplied by 8 ig plus 1.5 so vgs just to be made substitution that is that is given in the problem 12 volt and here you you just took the ig as a common and just given it as equation number one now the peak power loss is given by vg is equal to 5 watts in the problem it is given here peak power loss is given as 5 watts okay now what we can do so this uh, with with this equation now we'll go now 5 equal to vg vg means what 1.5 plus 8 times ig that is given into ig okay now we'll make use of these two equations we'll make use of these two equations because you can see this equation will contain ig and this also this equation will also contain here uh, we have two variables we cannot solve so here what we can do we can use this equation and uh, substitute for ig here substitute make a substitution for ig okay so uh, what we can get so finally uh, if you manipulate this one we will get one quadratic equation here we will be getting one quadratic equation 
okay if you solve this one uh, uh, what you can do you can bring ig inside 8 ig square plus 1.5 ig and if you 5 bring on the right hand side it will become minus 5 quadratic equation formula you can apply you will get the gate current here once you get the gate current this you substitute here in equation 1 you will get the rg rg will get it as 7 ohm hope you are uh, with me okay now the peak power loss is given by uh, duty cycle into uh, peak power loss is given by average power loss is uh, as large plane. so average power loss equal to peak power loss that is given by 5 watt into duty cycle that is 0 0.2 so this uh, last calculation is independent of finding the ig and rg here okay so you in this way you have to systematically solve the problem here so another one problem uh, just quickly cover this one also based on the gate characteristics here so gate characteristics of SCR is assumed to be straight line passing through the origin okay with a gradient of uh, 3 by uh, 3 kilo okay. gradient means that is slope calculate the required gate source resistance EGS is given and PG is given here so PG and VG, PG is nothing but what power that is power is nothing but product of voltage and current like this okay so the gradient is nothing but the gate case is nothing but it is a plot of VG by IG so gradient is nothing but a slope tan theta okay VG by IG will get it okay so just for you make you to sure here so the slope what you are getting this VG by IG the slope you can calculate like this okay slope you can calculate like this so that is tan theta opposite by adjacent okay opposite is nothing but gate voltage adjacent is nothing but gate current like that okay so hope you got that one sorry so this we make a substitution because the gradient is given 3k okay so v is equal to uh, 3 into 10 to the power of 3 times IG. okay now what you can do make a substitution of vg in one vg and the still substitute matter so whole thing will get uh, in terms of only single variable then you will get the solve for ig once you get uh, ig you will get the vg like that okay so next uh, uh, we will cover some uh, very important uh, another topic very small topic so many times you got a short note on this one so what are the different uh, methods uh, of turning on the thyristor because in the last uh, during the study of uh, on a static anode cathode cat 6 or gate cat 6 we have seen that or came across uh, we are triggering through the gate uh, current your SCR well before the breakover voltage okay like that there are different ways are there not only you can uh, turn on the SCR just by gate current or voltage there are other ways are there by which we can uh, try to reduce the uh, barrier drift width of the reverse bias junction J2 in SCR okay so one method is a forward voltage triggering okay normal forward voltage triggering that what we have covered OA curve that is a normal uh, at 125 degree centigrade without applying any triggering pulse uh, here uh, normal applied forward voltage you will see that the middle junction j3 which was re uh, reverse biased will uh, start undergoing avalanche effect and got uh, width, width reduced and start conducting so once it start conducting the voltage across SCR will suddenly drops to 1 to 1.5 volts okay so next one is a thermal triggering or temperature triggering so during this one so instead of gate current what uh, we are using at the gate terminal which was connected to the P region and NA to the cathode we are trying to increase the junction temperature of J3 means avalanche effect okay so when you go on increase in temperature that will result into the avalanche effect resulting into the more number of minority carriers to be liberated and uh, junction J3 got uh, woods reduced and start conducting so this way of uh, switching on the SCR from its uh, blocking to conduction state with the application of a temperature rise or a, a thermal rise is known as a thermal triggering or temperature triggering so here you can see note down the key word i have given 
increased junction temperature we are just focusing on the how to increase the junction temperature in the similar aspect uh, light triggering is there that is a radiation triggering that will result into an increase in number of electron hole pairs in the junction middle junction that will result into increase in number of charge carriers good example is light activated scr or light activated silicon control switch okay so the difference is there guys here this will result into minority carriers this will result into electron hole pairs charges charge carriers in the similar aspect with respect to charge there is another method is there that is called dv by dt triggering so here suppose uh, uh, because during uh, uh, when you are dealing with the scr operation the middle junction j3 got reverse uh, sorry j2 got reverse biased okay j2 got reverse biased compared to two outer junctions means uh, the whole all three junctions are appearing like a capacitor two plates of a capacitor which are separated by some air gap non conductivity here non conductivity is nothing but reverse biased junction j2 okay suppose if i assume applied voltage across this these two capacitors is v q is the charge cj is the capacitance then we can write the capacitive current equal to dq by dt okay if you differentiate this q that is q is nothing but c into v that is cj into v so how we can write u d v by dx plus v d v by dx like that so as the rate of change of junction capacitance is negligible it is very small very rarely increasing varying this equation will reduce us to so because this we can neglect because uh, the variation of cj with respect to time is very much less then uh, only dependency of uh, ic will be on the d by dt and capacitance means if the rate of change of voltage this will indicate what the rate of change of voltage with respect to time varies the device may turn on even though the voltage appears across the device is small means uh, ni forward bias voltage apply madirthire nano forward breaker voltage reach aage illa reach aagi trigger agudu illi okay ee adond first case but rutidella breaker voltage kitta munchane you are trying to trigger your scr by one or the other way either by increasing the temperature in terms of leakage current or by increasing the light or radiation in terms of increasing the electron hole pairs or by d by t d triggering by uh, what you can say by varying the rate of change of voltage across the device like this if you increase this then ic will increase that will trigger your yes here yeah. very simple in the similar light so the gate triggering already i discussed in the gate cat 6 either you apply dc gate dc means fixed dc battery it is not going to vary once you turn on it yes here will be turn on for a longer time ac gate triggering sinusoidal voltage you are applying okay during positive peak it will be turned on and no required during negative peak okay pulse gate triggering high carrier frequency signal you are using you will be turning on and off on and off by way uh, varying the duty cycle you will have the control over the switching of your scr like that so details are there are given in the notes we refer to that one so hope uh, for today's session this much is sufficient the next class will explore in detail about the different turn off methods of your scr and with some uh, different circuits and waveforms so hope uh, at the uh, uh, we are going to wind up this video session with some suggestions you have to read the, you have to read the notes my notes there then you can see this video to so that uh, in order to uh, note down any missing statements or uh, very important key statements in the in your they should be there in your answers second point practice the derivation which are not so difficult and numericals which are also not so difficult okay and uh, practice uh, the circuit diagrams and waveforms with a black pen black pen is must because your answer sheet will be scanned so these some suggestions you remember keep in mind and if you do, you do have any doubts during interactive session uh, i am not going to take their class because uh, offline video will be already uploaded and you are coming there i am assuming that you are uh, you might have seen the video and coming with the doubts there okay i am expecting the doubts and uh, 
don't hesitate or afraid to ask anything in the interaction session so remember these sessions uh, these suggestions which are very important and uh, uh, do the things seriously thank you